Praise the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. This is Minister Bernard Woods coming live to you from Snellville, Georgia. Boy, it's a beautiful day to be alive today. It's a beautiful day to trust and believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am so grateful and thankful to be alive today. I'm so grateful and thankful to be able to come live all over this world to minister the gospel of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to, to men and women, boys and girls, to give them a great opportunity not to only receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, but know what it means to have a personal, divine relationship with God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, that they can also take God at his word and give voice activation to the living word of God so God can legally move in planet Earth on their behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to apologize for, the, um, for take five. I want to apologize. I don't know what happened. I always believe God for the best, give him the best, to the best of my ability. But um, I didn't want to put it out, but the Lord told me to go ahead and put it out because I said so the Holy Ghost spoke some powerful things through me on tape five. This tonight is tape six. Tonight is tape six. And uh, I apologize all over the world. But I decree and declare that I decree and declare that you listen to tape five because there's some things the Holy Ghost said on tape five that you needed to hear and that it will propel you to, to more heights, bigger heights and propel you and to, and to the excel in the things of Almighty God. Boy, I tell you, it's a blessing. It's a blessing for the Lord Jesus Christ. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to take my time tonight. I came out tonight. <laughs> I tell you, I came out tonight to um, give you this word. And uh, this is tape six. So um, before, let's get started. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before your presence right now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I'm so grateful and thankful for the blood of the everlasting covenant. I'm so grateful and thankful for the blood of Jesus. I'm so grateful and thankful for everything that Jesus has done. To, to make a way for us to be back in right relationship with Yahweh the Father, Yahweh the Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and Yahweh the Holy Spirit. Father, I'm so grateful and thankful <clears throat> to come out tonight to minister to your people. I trust you that you will speak through my, my vocal cords. You will think through my mind. There will be none of me, but it will be all of you through the Holy Ghost, who is the greatest teacher on planet Earth. He's the one that bring back all the things for my remembrance, and he's the one that share the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ with mankind. Now, Father, <clears throat> I thank you that you will be glorified. Jesus Christ will be edified, and the Holy Spirit will be terrified. I mean, um, the Jesus Christ will be glorified. Father, you will be glorified. Jesus Christ will be edified, and the devil will be terrified, and he's under our feet. And that the body of Christ, we, the body of Christ, will be um, nourishing, we will continuously grow in the nourishing, the admonition of the Holy Ghost. I am so grateful and thankful, Father, to be alive today. I'm so grateful and thankful to be able to come out as a mouthpiece, to be a worker together with you and to labor together with you in every area of my life. Father, I give you praise, I give you glory, and I give you honor. I thank you for this day. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I was getting ready to come out, the Holy Ghost said to me, you know what tape you're doing? We know what message this would be. And I said, yes, Lord, it would be message six. It would be the sixth tape that you have me ministering on decisions. He said, you know what six represents, right? And I said, yes, Lord, I know what the number six represents. He said to me, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go with the number six tonight. I want you to show mankind about the number six based on decisions. Good God Almighty. I said, Lord, yes, Lord, I do it. Help me, Holy Spirit, I do it. So, ladies and gentlemen, before I get started, <laughs> before I get started, I want to say if you had a birthday in this month or your birthday is coming up in this month or if you had a birthday on this day, June the 21st, 2024, Minister Bernard Woods want to tell you personally, Happy, happy birthday. If, you, if you're experiencing an anniversary this month, if you had an anniversary already, or if you had an anniversary on this day, or if you have an anniversary coming, Minister Woods and family is telling you, happy, happy anniversary. Those who are experiencing a, a birthday and those who are experiencing an anniversary, man or woman, I decree and declare 
that you be a man or a woman of your word. Do not give your word if you're not able to keep it. If you experience an anniversary this month, Minister Bernard Woods is telling you personally, happy, and my family, happy, happy anniversary. And I decree and declare that you or your wife or you or your husband be a man or a woman of your word. Woods, why do you say that every time you minister? You just don't understand how important that is. God say everybody, God say everybody who is, um, who is, um, fan. <laughs> God said, everybody who is um, want to be successful in life, they don't understand and know about their words. They don't understand and know about being a man or a woman of your word. Now, I'm going to help you tonight to the best of my ability in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to share with you about the number six. Now, the number six, <laughs> before I get started, boy, I got to, <laughs> I want to say, Happy, uh, <laughs> I want to say uh, God bless to all the Glaview family, the Woods family, the Johnson family, the Mackey family, the Jackson family. I want to say God bless all those who are watching from my alumni, alumni family, Miami Springs Senior High, alumni. I want to say God bless all those from my Florida Memorial family, my military family, and those who are the trucker family, and those who watch me from Snailville. I didn't know I had a lot of people watching me from Snailville. Woo, and I saw that. A lot of people watching me from Snailville. God take this, take whatever he need to take the message to go to. Now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I had to get that out the way so I for, don't forget. And I want to say I, I apologize for take five. Me and my son don't know what happened. I decree and declare we got the victory in Jesus' name. And I was so upset because I'm a perfectionist. I believe in giving God the best that I can give him. God, God is the perfect. You will never meet nobody like God. God is totally perfect. Perfect. Totally perfect. He's totally, he crossed all the I's and the T's. And um, perfect, perfect as he is, he's dealing with unperfect human beings. Deliver us, set us free, and then ask us to go reach the other ones and bring them in. Compel them to come in. So I'm going to take my time tonight. Now, if I don't get whatever I don't get to tonight, hopefully I come out and do it on tape seven. But I'm believing God I get to what I need to get to tonight. I want to be a blessing to you. Now, the number six is the number of man. The number six is the number of the earth. The number six is the number of the mark of the beast. Mankind was born. Mankind was created on the sixth day. Man, the earth was created six days. God created the heavens and the earth and the seventh day he rests. The mark of the beast is the number six. Mankind, when we leave this planet, when we leave, when the breath of life leave our body, we are buried six feet deep. So I'm on the, I'm on, I'm on, the Lord told me when I was getting dressed, he asked me what the number tape was. I said, the number six. He said, you know what the number six means? I said, yes, Lord. He said, all right, I want you to go to the number six. So ladies and gentlemen, you live and die by every decision that you make. I've been helping people. I've been helping myself. Because I, like I told you, I'm the first partake of the word. I'm the first partake of the fruit. Like I told all of you all, not, not only when you hear this tape, not only do you get blessed, but I get blessed too because it keeps me built up in the admonition and nourishing of the living word of God. And, it com and faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the living word of God. So let's go, ladies and gentlemen. If I take you for, I'm going to take you for a ride tonight, but hopefully I get to everything. If not, I'll come back. But take six. This is, the, this is um, the valley of decision. Multitudes, multitudes. In the valley of decisions. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decisions. Now, I want you to go to Galatians, the five chapter. The Galatians, the fifth chapter. The day is the, we're talking about the flesh. Galatians, turn your Bibles with me to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Oh, let me start my clock, ladies and gentlemen. I ain't start my clock. Oh, Lord, let me start my clock. The Galatians, the fifth chapter. All right, let's go. Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians, the fifth chapter. I'm going to start with the 16th verse. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
I want you to understand this, ladies and gentlemen. God is starting off this chapter. He's starting off. The Holy Ghost wanted me to start off this way. I believe in my heart this is the way he wanted me to start off. He said, I want you to talk on the number six. And I knew what the number six meant when I, when I told him this is the tape six. He asked me, do you know what tape this is? I said, yes. This is tape. This is message number six. You know what six mean? I said, yes, Lord. He said, that's what I want you to go with, number six. When he said that to me, immediately I know what he was talking about. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, God is telling you, he's telling us, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why, minister God? Why, minister Woods? Because you have a decision and a choice to make. You can either choose to walk in the spirit or you can choose to fulfill the lust of the flesh. There is a choice and a decision that you have to make. He said, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. You'd be surprised how many people understand this scripture or supposed to understand this scripture or supposed to know this scripture and they still end up choosing to be with the flesh. They still end up making a choice to go with the flesh, fleshly things. <laughs> Ooh, woo, they choose to let the flesh be the leader instead of the spirit. They'll quote, <clears throat> they quote scriptures to you. They tell you that they know about the Bible. They tell you, oh, Woods, I heard that before. See, faith, the Bible don't say faith coming by having heard. The Bible say faith coming by hearing and hearing by the living word of God. Continuum ad infinitum. It ain't say faith coming by having heard. It say faith coming by hearing. Continuum ad infinitum. Never stop. So these, these, these people, be, they quick to tell you now. Don't judge me, Woods. I'm in grace. <laughs> grace. I got, I got grace, Woods. I got grace and mercy. I know, I'm, I, I, I know I got a problem with women, but Woods, I got grace and mercy now. I, I, you know, I, I'm God working on me. God helping me. <laughs> God helping me, Woods. Don't judge me, man. God helping me. I know I'm married, but Woods, I got, I, I, it's just that I like, I like other women, man. I like seeing women, man. Oh, Woods, I know I'm married, but I just like being with other men. Oh, I like being with another man. I know my husband is working, and I know he get off late, but I got a boyfriend on the side. <laughs> I have a boyfriend on the side, Woods. So I don't want to hear you telling me about walking the spirit so I won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. <laughs> Listen, ladies and gentlemen. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Ooh, now he finna show us the works of the flesh. He finna show us when a person do these things, when these, things are being applied, when these things are being applied to their life, when these things are being shown, when these things are being revealed, when people can see these things, he's telling us what are the works of the flesh. The, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. I'm married, Woods, but I just, I can't, I, man, God, God with me, Woods, he's giving me grace, grace and favor. I got favor and grace, Woods. God working on me, man. I, 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 I know, man, I'm saved, man. I know I'm supposed to be in the I know I'm supposed to be in the Lord. I know I'm a deacon. I know I'm a minister. I know I'm a psalmist. Come on, Woods. I know these things, man. But I just got a I, I just got a problem with women, man. And 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 and, and, and I, she's just a long time friend, Woods. Woo! The Bible telling you, you have a decision and a choice to make. And the Lord is saying to you through Minister Bernard Woods, you live and die by every decision and choice that you make. 
You want to be successful. You want to be an entrepreneur. You've been running a business. You may start off real good. You may have good intentions. You may have good motives. But now you got, now you're falling in problem. Now you're falling in trouble because you're leaning to the flesh. You're going after the lust of the flesh. You are, you're breaking a serious law. The Bible said the works of the flesh are these. Adultery. Fornication. Oh, Woods, I know I ain't saved, man. I, I mean, I'm saved, Woods, but you know, right now, man, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm not married, but you know, I got a girlfriend, Woods, and we shacking, man. You know, I'm, I'm going to marry her, but I, I ain't ready to put the ring on her finger yet, Woods. You know, and, and she loved me, man, and I love her too. We've been together a long time, Woods. And, and I'm not touching the woods. Do y'all stay together? Yeah, we stay together, but she's sleeping in one room and I sleep in the other room. You're putting too much, you're putting too much, you're putting too much faith in your flesh, my brother, my sister. You're putting too much faith in your flesh. You're putting your faith in your flesh instead of putting your faith in the word of God. The Bible said these are the, <laughs> the Bible said these are the works of the flesh are manifest, which is adultery, married couples. Sleeping with other longtime friends, cheating on one another. Then it goes on and say fornication. You're not married. You're shacking. You're talking about you going. You talking about y'all and uh, y'all engaged. Oh, was we engaged, man? But we not married. But you having sex outside of marriage. You're not married, but you're having sex. You, you saying, oh, what does that go by the common law? See, the world got a common law now. If you stay shacking for so long, they, they consider you as married couples. God don't consider you as no married couples, ladies and gentlemen. You got to answer to him. You have to answer to him. You got to watch the decisions and the choices that you make. You live and die by every decision and choice that you make. So you fornicating. <clears throat> having sex without being married, shacking, living together, talking about, oh, I'm going to get her a ring. Oh, I do got the ring, but I ain't give it to her yet. I'm, you know, I'm just trying to see if we can, um, I'm trying to see if we compatible. I'm going by the sign. She an Aries and I'm a Sagittarius. I'm going by the sign. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, because this is the stuff I hear all the time on my job. All the time I hear this stuff on my job, going by signs. I got to find out, is she my sign? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, messing and playing around with Ouija boards, playing around with cards. Woo! And you go to church, and you think God don't see that stuff. Jesus, boy, Woo decisions and choices that you make. Playing with Ouija boards, looking with Ouija card, playing, look, going at TV, looking at the people saying, you know, following the, um, what they call them people that speak on TV, following them, um, woo, she call about kuna resebe. Following them, um, the, um, spiritualists, following those spiritualists. Outside of the word of God, and you're supposed to be saved, delivered and set free. <laughs> decision and choices that you make God say son tell them about the flesh idolatry witchcraft hatred hating one another supposed to be loved ones hating one another brothers and sisters can't get along hating one another Ooh, woo. But you want to make it to heaven. You want to go to the pearly gates. You want to go up there and be with the Lord Jesus Christ. But you can't even love the brother or your sister who you see every day. The Bible says if you can't love your brother or sister who you see every day, how you going to love God? And you can't love your brother or sister you see every day. These are the works of the flesh. These are the decisions and choices that you make. You choose to hate one another instead of walking in love, instead of loving, instead of being forgiving. Instead of forgiving, get forgiving them, you rather hate them and be against them. And, and, and Lord have mercy. Listen, variance, emulations, emu, em, emulations, wrath. Woo! Wrathful person. Every time somebody sees you, you angry. Never have a smile on. You always got wrath. Quick to want to get somebody back. 
quick to do the last word. Marry in the church, saved, delivered, and set free. But you got wrath with your wife, and you have wrath with your husband. You have wrath with your family members. And they looking at you saying, why should I go to church? Look how she acting. Why should I go to church? Look how he acting. You mean to tell me you want me to go to church and you acting like that? Decisions and choices that you make. You can call somebody to live, um, live for God, and you can call somebody to turn away from God. And their blood would be on your hands because of the way you carry yourself based on the decisions and choices that you make. Husband and wife fighting, hating one another, talking evil to one another, but then come to church and raise up holy hands. Ooh, whoa! The number six, God is telling you to get out of the flesh and walk in the spirit that you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why, Minister Woods? Because there's a price that you're going to have to pay. There's an awesome price you will have to pay. Wrath, strife, always in strife. On your job, you can't get along with nobody. You're always in strife. You in strife with your husband. You in strife with your sons. You in strife with your daughters. You in strife with your aunties. You in strife with your uncles. You in strife with your cousins. You in strife with your nieces. Nobody can get along with you. You full of strife. But you're supposed to be saved. You're supposed to be delivered. You're supposed to be set free. I'm talking about Christians now. I ain't talking about those in the world. We expect for them to live like this. But when it comes to the Christian, when it comes to those who are supposed to be Christ-like, those who are supposed to be sanctified, consecrated, set aside for God's purpose and his use only, people can't get along with you. You're full of strife. You're you, <laughs> you quick to have strife. You're slow to repent. But you want God to let you in his kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Listen. Seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers. You quick to murder somebody else. Woo! Quick to murder somebody else behind their back. Quick to talk about them. Quick to murder. They, um... You quick to murder their name. You quick to murder anything about them. Instead of you believing God to help them, you quick to murder them. You quick to talk evil about them. You quick to laugh at them. You want something bad to happen to the person. And you think God don't see that foolishness. Who are you talking about, Woods? I'm talking about those who are supposed to be saints. I'm talking about those who are supposed to be Christians. The Holy Ghost is talking to the Christians. He's telling them, be careful how you make your decision and how you make your choices. Ooh, woo. You live and die by every decision and choice that you make. You quick to put down their character. You quick to assassinate their character. You walk in an envy and strife and hatred, jealousy. Ooh, woo! Instead of believing God for the best of them, you being jealous of them. Lord have mercy. And I'm talking about Christians who are supposed to be saved, delivered, and set free. Come on. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on. Envyings, murder, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, they which do such things, they which do such things, they which make decisions and choices and do such things, they which make decisions and choices and do such things shall not enter into the kingdom of God. He said, you shall not enter. Ooh, and you look so holy in church. You look so Christian in church. You look like you God's man or woman on the, on the scene. But deep in your heart, deep in your life, you are wicked. Jesus said you are full of um, dead man bones. Jesus said you are a wolf in sheep clothing. Jesus. And God is trying to woo you through Minister Bernard Woods. 
about decisions. He said, multitude, multitudes in the valley of decisions. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decisions. When I was going through that, God said, son, the reason I said multitudes, he said, that can be billions of people in there. Billions, he said, is uncountable. I said, Lord, he said, uncountable, son. Don't understand the decisions and choices they are making. And God has sent this man, this young man on the internet to help you make the right decision and the right choice so you can be with him for eternity, so you can give voice activation to his word, so you can apply his word daily to your life. i never seen a time that we're living in now that people thinking they need another book, thinking they need to add something to this book. This book, God knew exactly what he was doing when he made it 66 books of the Bible. He knew exactly what he was doing. Six is the number of man. Six is the number of the earth. And six is the number of the mark of the beast. God says 66 books. And here you go, people calling me, talking to me, texting me, talking about we got a right to do the, the, the search of the books, Woods. You ain't even put this book into application yet. You ain't even worked this book yet. So what make you think if you get other books to add with this book, it's going to make you more holy? Work this book here, and you'll find out. You don't need no other book. You have the right book. Ooh, woo! Come on, Woods, let's go. Come on, Holy Ghost. But for the fruit of the Spirit... Let me say this again. Envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before as I have told you in the time past, they which do, they which make decisions and choices and do such things like this shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't care how many times you went to church. I don't care how many times you, you preach a beautiful sermon, but deep in your heart. Midnight hour when nobody don't see you. When, you don't, when you're not under the lights, now you're behind closed doors and you have iniquity. Iniquity means hidden sins. Iniquity on the inside of you, lawlessness. And then you walk around talking about, Woods, God, I got grace, man. I got grace. We under grace now, Woods. Grace, you know, look, look Woods, God working on me. The Holy Ghost working on me. The Holy Ghost working on me like the Holy Ghost dumb. The Holy Ghost ain't dumb. He the, he the most smartest entity in the, on this planet. He not dumb. You, you don't know when your time going to run out. You don't know when the Lord going to say enough is enough. He know the heart. The Bible says he tried the reins. He tries the hearts of all mankind. He said the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? God, the only one know your heart. And you are in here playing games. Listen, he said, but the fruit of the spirit, he's telling you what the fruit of the spirit is, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Those who choose the right decision and the right choice, we walk in love. Those who choose the right spirit and the right choice, we walk in joy. Those who make the right decision and the right choice, we walk in peace. We speak peace everywhere we go. We speak love everywhere we go. We speak joy. We decree and declare with our mouth because we believe it in our heart. We are full of love. The love of God has been shared and brought in our heart by the Holy Ghost. We're full of joy. The joy of the Lord Jesus Christ is our strength. We're full of peace. Why? Because we believe to make the right decision and the right choice. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, that keep my hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Why? Because I make the right decision and the right choice. I stay with the word. Woo! Listen. Long suffering. You got some people out here. You have to be long suffering with them, because God was long suffering with us, wishing no man to perish. I am so grateful He was long suffering with me. And he, by him being long-suffering with me, I learned, I learned how to be long-suffering with other people. I said, God, you got to take over in this position. You got to take over in this situation. I decree and declare that long-suffering come forth. I decree and declare that I let the spirit of long-suffering come forth in Jesus' name. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Gentleness. The Bible says everything that's desiring a man is kind 
kindness and gentleness. That's the greatest thing that's desire in a man, is to be kind and gentleness. Not just to be a man that have money, not just to be a man that can make a baby, not just to be a man that have a good car and dress good. The, the thing that's desire in a man is kindness and gentleness. He got to know when to be kind, and he got to know when to the, 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 the bring forth gentleness in every area of his life. When he understands the decisions and choices that he makes. Come on. Goodness. A man got to understand and know how to be good. The Bible says be good to your, to, your, to, your, to your evil people. When people do you wrong, when they mistreat you, the Bible says be good to your enemies. The Bible says when you good to him, it's like putting coals of fire upon his head. When you make the right decision and the right choice, you be good to those who mistreat you. Why? Because God is on your side. And God will make sure you stay blessed. He'll make sure you walk in victory. He'll make sure you're being overcomer. Why? Because you choose to make your choice and your decision is I'm going to treat them good in spite of what they do to me. I'm going to treat them good. I'm going to let the goodness of God that leadeth thee to repentance flow through me to my brother man, to my fellow man. Let the goodness of God flow through me to those who I meet. Hallelujah. And faith. I make the decision and choice to live and walk by faith. And what is faith was believing in my heart and saying with my mouth. Believing in my heart and saying with my mouth what God said about me. Those are the fruit of the spirit. That's how we're supposed to live when we choose to walk with the spirit and not, to, and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because the flesh takes you to hell, ladies and gentlemen. The flesh takes you to a place that you wish you was never, ever created. And I'm doing the best that I can to stop somebody from going to that place. I can't shake it. Oh, every day I wake up, I think about what God showed me. I think about what he said to me. That's where I was going if I wouldn't have got saved. Shikalabakanarisebe. Oh, hey, Jesus is Lord. That's why I say I made it in my mind. I made it in my heart. I preach this gospel as long as I live. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Come on. Meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. God said you can't even have a law against those who walk in the spirit and don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why? Because there's no law against what, he, what, the, what the Spirit produced. There's no law against the fruit of the Spirit. Woo! Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen. And they that are of Christ have crucified the flesh. We crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. We crucified it. We're in Christ. We've been crucified with him on the cross. All our lusts and affections... That's contrary to the word of God. God said you've been crucified. You're supposed to see yourself crucified on the cross. You're supposed to see yourself crucified when it comes to the flesh. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. It's based on the decision and choices that we make. Now, come on. If we live in the spirit, verse 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. If we live, if we make a choice and a decision to live in the spirit, he said, then let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another and envying one another. Like I told you, this is my assignment. <laughs> God ain't tell me nothing about no pastor. He ain't tell me nothing about no prophet. He ain't tell me nothing about no apostle. He ain't tell me nothing about no bishop. He ain't tell me nothing about no teacher. He ain't tell me nothing about no, no, no um, evangelist. He says, son, get on the internet and show my people what I taught you. 
Teach my people how to take me at my word. Teach my people how to give voice activation so I can move on their behalf. So I can move on their behalf. So they can see and understand that they can have a true divine relationship with God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of Israel. That's what he told me. This is my assignment. <laughs> Don't get mad at my assignment. This is what God told me to do, and this is what I'm doing. Woo Ladies and gentlemen, now let's go. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Go to 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. I'm doing good. I got four more minutes. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. We're talking about walk in, the, walk in the spirit that you shall not fulfill. The lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit so you can make the right decision and the right choices that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. <clears throat> Excuse me. 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's start off with the ninth verse. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not woo, inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. See, there's a lot of people out there being deceived. There's a lot of people out there being deceived. One minute they're in Christ, the next minute they're messing with Ouija boards. One minute they're in Christ, the next minute they're doing all kind of gambling, all kind of stuff. <laughs> they're doing all kind of stuff. One minute they're with God, the next minute you're like, hey, man, ain't you saved? Wait a minute, brother, ain't you saved? Oh, man, you know, man, you know, you know, man, yeah. But sometimes man, I, just, I, take, I just take a little wine for, you know, Paul said take a little wine for the stomach's sake. Look like you're taking more than a little wine there, my brother. Look like you're taking a whole bottle. Talking about a little wine for the stomach's sake. Look like you're drinking the whole bottle. But yeah, but, Will, but see, Will, don't judge me now. Will, don't judge me now. You know, I'm in grace. Now, they, they, they quick to say that. I'm in grace, Woods, and, and the Lord is working on me. <laughs> Woo! Listen, ladies and gentlemen. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, shacking up. Oh, Woods, I supposed to gave her the ring two, year, two weeks ago, but, um, you know, she says she's not ready right now. And, um, you know, she said, we, you know, she thinking we need to wait a little bit longer. Okay, is y'all living together? Yeah, we living together. Hold on, brother. The Bible say, yeah, I know what the Bible say, but my pastor said it's okay. My pastor say, as long as she sleep in that room and I sleep in that room, it's okay. You got to be kidding me. Your pastor told you that? Yeah, my pastor told me that, Woods. And my other brothers and sisters in Christ told me that. They said, don't let nobody judge us. If we know we can keep ourselves before God at the nighttime behind closed doors, don't let nobody judge us. But the Bible say, my brother, shun the very presence of evil. The Bible say, my brother, let not your good be evil spoken of. Y'all ain't married? No, we ain't married, Woods. Y'all shacking? Yeah, we shacking. So that's the decision, and that's the choice that you made. Oh, yeah, 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 that's the decision and choice we made. And you want me to believe, a man, you want me to believe that y'all together and you ain't touching her. Oh, yeah, what is I ain't touching her? And you got to be kidding me. You're putting too much, tr you, you're putting too much trust in the flesh. You're putting too much trust in the flesh. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to help. I don't know, the Holy Ghost got me going. I'm trying to help somebody. Listen, neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers Ooh, woo. Jesus adulterers you know <laughs> God will forgive anybody if you truly mean it and you truly repent and turn away from it he will forgive you but you have to truly mean it and turn away from it you have to truly mean that, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I need help. Lord, I need help. I know this wrong. I know I can't keep living like this. God, can you help me? The Bible says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Jude, the 24th verse. God will help you, ladies and gentlemen, if you truly, but you have to turn away from it. You have to make a decision and a choice to turn away from it. Why? Because it's going to lead you to a place where you wish you was never created. Listen. Nor, in, nor infinite, 
nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Ooh, woo! Men laying up with men. Women laying up with women. God said you have to turn. Listen, God loved the homosexual, but he hate the sin. You have to turn away from the sin. You have to repent and turn away from it. You have to make a choice and a decision to turn away from the sin. Yes, he loved the lesbian and the lesbian, the lesbian women's, but they have to turn away from the sin. She babe. You have to turn away from it. You have to ask for forgiveness. You have to, you have to make a decision and a choice to turn away from it. Listen, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. I'm preaching on the sixth chapter, the, the sixth um, teaching. This is the sixth tape. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decisions. The day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Ain't nobody got something they didn't ask God to forgive them by. Not one preacher. We all got something we had to turn away from and ask God for help and say, God, help me. And he did, and he will help you. But you have to make the decision and the choice and turn away from it. You have to mean it. You have to have, you have, to have godly sorrow. You have to turn away from it, godly repentance. You got to mean that you want to be saved, delivered, and set free. And God will save you and deliver you and set you free. If you mean business with God, ain't no preacher, nobody is perfect. We all got something we had to turn away from. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, and God wanted me to preach this tonight, June the 21st, 2024, right after Juneteenth. And such were some of you, Bernard. But Bernard, you are washed. And whosoever watching this video, you've been washed. And you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. And God is wooing you, whoever you are. He's wooing you. You're watching this tape tonight. Minister Bernard was coming on here on the sixth tape, the sixth teaching, which represents the flesh, which represents the number of man, which represents the number of the earth, and which represents the mark of the beast. Six. And God is wooing you, telling you on this teaching, make the right decision and the right choice. Stay out the flesh, because the flesh going to kill you if you don't stay out the flesh. It's going to take you to a place where you wish you was never, ever created. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. He said, all things are lawful unto me. Woo! All things are lawful. But all things are not expedient. What do you mean, Woods? All things are lawful. What you mean, Woods? You mean tell me what you mean by all things are lawful? <laughs> yeah, I can go to the nightclub. If I'm the right age, I can go to the nightclub, but it's not expedient for me to go to the nightclub. Woo! All things are lawful. <laughs> To go see the horse race. <laughs> but it's not expedient for me to go to the horse races. Come on, Woods. Talk to us, Woods. All things are lawful. Chikala Bakanda. To go to the nightclubs. Come on. Where the women hang on the pole. But it's not expedient for me to go to the nightclubs where the women hang on the pole. Why, Woods? Because I'm saved. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I have to make the right decision and the right choices. All things are lawful for me to hang out with the guys when it's time to get off work and go get something to eat at the wings, to look at the women who come serve at the table. But all things are not expedient for me to go to the guys to hang out with them, to go to the wing store, the wing shop. Come on, talk to me, Wood. Sports coming up now. So a lot of people going out to the sports bars. 
All things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. Why? I have a decision and a choice to make. I have a decision and a choice to make. I live and die by every decision and every choice that I make. I live and die by every decision and every choice that I make. You live and die by every decision and every choice that you make. Paul is telling you, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Woo! All things are lawful for me. I can eat meat anytime I get ready, but I choose not to eat meat. Why was all things are lawful for me, but all things may not be expedient? <laughs> so I don't eat meat. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. I don't eat things with HFCS, high fructose corn syrup. Why, Woods? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Why? Because it's not good for my body. Ooh, woo! It's not good for my body. <laughs> I'm trying to help you the best way I know how. I'm bringing the gospel to you the best way I know how. Come on. Meats for the belly, verse 13, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. You hear that? Ooh, I had people, boy, when I did that teaching on meat, I had a lot of people fussing. Oh, what? What you talking about? What? I'm going to eat meat. Man, what's wrong with you? Man, I'm going to eat meat. The Bible says bless it and just eat it. <laughs> and I told them, if you look at the way God designed your body, if you look at the way God created the human body, you don't have to go, we don't have to have no more discussion. If you look at the way God designed the human body, you will see that your body was never, ever designed to, to partake of meat. Meat came in after the sin, after mankind transgressed against God. That's when mankind became a meat eater. But you was never designed to eat meat. I'm going to make sure I take off my glass so you can see my face. You was never designed to eat meat. You can fuss, holler, scream. You can say anything you want to say. Go look at the way God designed your body, and that'll answer every question that you have about meat. And you got people right now today going home before that time because they refuse to make a decision and a choice to turn away from me. <laughs> they refuse. You live and die by every decision that you make. Oh, she You live and die by every decision that you make. And look what the Bible said right here about God going to do to the meat and the belly. Look what God said. He said, meats for the belly and, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. The body is not for fornication. All you out there shacking. All you out there talking about woods. I got a, I got a ring for a man, but I ain't give it to her yet. She said that she, she said we're not ready yet, but she constantly sleeping with me every night. We sleep in the same apartment. We sleep in the same house. She get up and go to work in the morning. I get up and go to work in the morning like we married, but y'all are not married. Y'all are shacking with one another. <laughs> Excuse me. You are shacking. You're having fornication before almighty God, but you want God to let you in, your king, in his kingdom when the breath of life leave your body. The decision and choice that you make, you live, I'm going to keep saying it, and die by every decision and choice that you make. Listen to what the Bible says. He says for the, he says for, now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And she's supposed to be a Christian, and you're supposed to be saved. And you say you love her, and she says she loves you, then you should have been man enough to let her know. Then we have to stay separate until we come together correctly and we do it right. You stay with your mama, and I stay over here with my apartment until we get married, until I give you the ring, until I announce the engagement, and we get married. If you had any kind of manhood about yourself, if you had any kind of respect, for the woman, you would, she kill her by kidnapping. If you had any kind of respect for her, sir, you wouldn't do her like that. 
And if she had any kind of respect for her life, her body, she wouldn't be in that situation. Ooh, you live and die by every decision that you make. Come on. And God have both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. Now, Woods, who are you talking to? I'm talking to Christians. I'm talking to supposed to be saints. I'm talking to supposed to be sanctified, consecrated, sanct sanctified, consecrated, dedicated for God's purpose and its use only. And the Lord is talking to them. He's talking to us. He said, know that your bodies are the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not. They which is joined to an harlot is one body. For two saith he shall be one flesh. So God is saying if you join to a harlot, if you join to a prostitute, and the times we're living in now, we got women doing anything to get some money because of the way the economy is. And my heart goes out to women who've been put in positions, who've been getting jobs or, or getting a job interview. And the person who's interviewing them telling them, unless I have sex with you, I won't hire you. Or they'll hire them and say, unless you have sex with me, then I won't keep you on the job. i fire you and send you back home. And so now the women have to make a decision and she have to make a choice. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the young lady, if you make a decision to stay holy before God, if you make a decision to stay, to stay honest before Almighty God, God will bless your life tremendously. Not only will God deal with the man, but he will bless your life tremendously, even if he have to close that business down to make sure you get another job. And you just don't know what's going on right now in the economy, the way the economy is. Women are being put in so kind of, all kind of situations. But you remember, we live and die by every decision that we make. We live and die by every decision that we make. Listen, I'm finishing up. Listen, I ain't going to be able to get to number three. I'll do number three when I come back. I'm going to finish up with number two on this second one. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What know ye not? They which is joined to an harlot or a prostitute is one body. For the two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord Jesus Christ is one spirit. He tell you, flee, run from fornication. See, ladies and gentlemen, those who shacking, God say, run. <laughs> run from fornication. He say, flee fornication. Every sin that a man, woman, boy, or girl doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Means you will have certain kind of soul ties and boy to take almighty God to break you from them soul ties. God is telling you, Woo, she He said, flee fornication, run from it. Run, Forrest Gump. Run, whosoever watching on this video. Run from fornication. Run. See, they don't say no more about, you know, AIDS, the virus of AIDS. That, you know, we don't hear no more about AIDS. We don't hear it like we used to hear it. Especially when I came, when God snatched me out back in 1986. God snatched me out. Ooh, I mean, I mean, he saved me. And, had an, and I had an encounter with him. Snatched me out. Mm. I can't tell you how many of my partners got took out by that AIDS virus. And God snatched me out. Now we don't hear no more about AIDS. But AIDS are running rampant through the United States of America. It's running rampant to those who ain't got no kind of boundaries on their life. Those who making bad decisions and bad choices. AIDS is running rampant, even though they don't say nothing about it. It's still here. There's repercussions, ladies and gentlemen. 
when you live outside the word of God. There's repercussion when you break the commandments of Almighty God. There's repercussion. I don't care how much they say, oh, if you shack and you're going to be married. If you shack for 12, 20, 15, 20 years, automatically the government see you married. The devil is a liar. God see you still shacking. God see you still having fornication. He say, flee it. Run from it. Ooh, woo. He say, run from it. Why? Because it'll kill you dead. There's a repercussion coming to those who refuse to make the right decision and the right choice. Let me calm down. Calm down, Minister Bernard Woods. Calm down. No, you're not. But he that is joined into the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Run from it. Every sin that a man do it without the body. But he that committed fornication, he that committed sin, he that committed any kind of sexual sins, any kind of sexual sins, sinneth against his own body. Whether, whether it's fornication or adultery, you sinneth against your own body. And it's going to take Almighty God to bring you free. It's going to take Almighty God to rescue you. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. What, ye, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Woo! Woo! Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you have not of your own. You, let me read that again. What? Know ye not that your body, <clears throat> men, women, boys, and girls, is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. You are not your own, ladies and gentlemen. You are not your own. If you are blood brought and blood washed, if you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Excuse me. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Woo! Woo! Jesus, boy. Listen. For ye are brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, I feel led to stop right here. Some of you may say, Woods, why are you preaching like that? Because this is one of the areas, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, God had to deliver me. This is one of the areas, boy, that I had to get. The, if anybody can preach this, I can preach it. If anybody can minister this, I can minister it. Because this is the area that God delivered me and set me free. Ooh, woo! He delivered me and set me free. That's why I'm looking in this camera and I'm telling you. I'm telling my brothers and sisters in Christ and those who are not saved, those who are not blood brought, and those who are not blood washed. And those who saying, Woods, I hear you, man. Woods, but I, I Woods, I, 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 Woods, I look like I can't break this thing, man. Yes, you can, my brother. Yes, you can. All you got to do is turn your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you can, young lady. All you got to do is turn your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ before it's too late. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm telling you, Jesus loved you with an unconditional love. He put me on this Internet to help you. He put me on this Internet to show you that you can do it. All things are lawful for, to me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful to me, but all things are not expedient. And Paul said that I would not be brought under the power of any. You can break it if you just turn your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no sin greater than Jesus. None. All you got to do is call on Jesus. All you got to do is say, Minister Woods, I've been watching you, man. Man, I, 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 Woods, I need help in this area, man. Woods, I need help in this area, man. Woods, I need help in this area. I hear you loud and clear, Woods. Can I get some help? Yes, my brother. Yes, my sister. Yes, those who are looking at me. Those who are in the gospel. Those who are in the ministry. And you're cheating on your wife. You're in the ministry. And you're cheating on your husband. And you think you can't get out. Yes, you can get out. All you got to do is make the right decision and the right choice is just go to God and ask God to forgive you and deliver you and wash you clean through the blood of the everlasting covenant. And I'm telling you, when that blood hits you, the Bible said, who the son set free is free indeed. I'm telling you, the Bible said, though your sin be, be red as crimson, the blood of Jesus said, wash it white than snow. There's no sin greater than the blood of Jesus. And I'm telling you, if you mean business with God, if you mean business with God, if you mean business with Almighty God, 
I'm telling you, he can deliver you and set you free. He can deliver you and set you free. He can give you back. He can give you back your holiness. He can give you back your cleanliness. All you got to do is turn to him. The Bible said in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And you may be watching me, and you may be saying, Woods, it was meant for me to watch you tonight. Oh, Woods, it was minister, Woods, it was meant for me to watch you tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus, I need some help. And if you said, and you, follow, and you repeat after me, say, Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I want to ask you to forgive me for fornication. Forgive me for shacking up. Forgive me for shacking for all these years. Talking about we married and I ain't got no ring on my finger and we've been sleeping with one another and now you got Minister Woods on here tonight telling us to flee, run from fornication. So Father, I ask you to forgive me. You may be saying, Woods, I want to ask God to forgive me for cheating on my wife or cheating on my husband with my boyfriend or somebody. I, I just love him and I just liked him for a long time, but I didn't know I was going to still have feelings for him. Woods, I want to ask you to forgive me. I want to ask God to forgive me for cheating. And the Bible says, you said, Heavenly Father, forgive me. Father, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, you called my number tonight. Oh, God, you called my number. God, I need your help. I need your help. I need to turn away from fornication. I need to turn away from my love on the side. I need to turn away from my mistress on the side. God, help me to lead this young man. Help me to lead this young woman alone. God, I don't want to go to hell. God, I don't want to go to hell. I want to make the right choice and the right decision. I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of cheating. I'm tired of conniving, scheming, and cheating, and lying to my wife, and lying to my husband, and lying to my children. God, help me before it's too late. And if you mean that in your heart, you say, Lord, I, I ask you to forgive me. Father, you said if I ask you to forgive me, you said if I confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead, Father, you said I'd be saved. Father, Minister Woods said there is no sin greater than the blood of Jesus Christ. So, Father, as I see Minister Woods ministering tonight, God, I thank you that Minister Woods taught teaching us how to make the right decision and the right choice. Father, I thank you. I believe in my heart I made the right decision and the right choice. God, help me get up from this day forth. Help me turn away from the sin. Help me turn away from the lesbianism. Help me turn away from the homosexuality. Help me turn away from the adultery. Help me turn away from the fornication. And Father, I thank you. I believe that I'm saved, delivered, and set free. I believe I have a new name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Father, thank you for allowing me to see this message tonight. I will never, ever be the same. God, you said I have a new name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I thank you for it right now. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. I believe I'm saved. I believe I'm delivered, and I believe I'm set free. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, those who prayed that prayer with me, I want to say welcome to the family of God. I want to say God loves you with an unconditional love. I want to say from this day forth, your life will never, ever be the same. Make the right decision and the right choice. Remember, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, my brothers, and go to a church that preach and teach the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and hang around men and women, boys and girls, with precious like faith that will build you up and not tear you down. Now, my brothers and sisters in Christ, you saved, you delivered, and you set free, but you live in a double standard. You like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You one way in public, but you're another way behind closed doors. And your wife see it, or your husband see it, but they can't pinpoint it because you're doing it so slick. You're cheating. You're, you're tipping out. You're hanging out with the boys going looking for the girls. Or you got a girl on the side that you met on the job. Or you got a secretary that you're dealing with. And God is trying to warn you before it's too late. He put Minister Wills on this internet to catch you before it's too late to warn you to make the right decision or the right choice.
to make the right decision and the right choice because you live and die by every decision that you make. And you may say, Minister Woods, I'm tired, man. You're right. I'm tired of cheating. I knew I was wrong. I knew I shouldn't have been doing it. But Minister Woods, can God truly, 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 truly forgive me for I wrecked my life for eternity? Yes, he can, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God can forgive you. There is no sin greater than the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God said in 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins unto him, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you right now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Father, you said if I confess my sins unto you, you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Father, you called me out tonight. Father, I want to ask you to forgive me for fornication. Father, I want to ask you to forgive me for, for adultery. Father, I want to ask you to forgive me for being on the down low or down high, whatever they be saying. I ask you to forgive me for cheating with another man. I ask you to forgive me for cheating with another woman when my husband think I'm straight and I just love him, but I was out there cheating with another woman. God, forgive me. God, I ask you to forgive me. God, I ask you to help me. You said in your words, Minister Woods said that you said if I confess my sins unto you, you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Father, I'm tired. I feel dirty. I feel filthy. I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of living like this. I hate myself. I can't even like myself when I look in the mirror. But God, I thank you that Minister Woods said there is no sin greater than the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, I thank you that I believe I am forgiven. I believe that I'm cleansed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, Father, I look to you. I look to you, Father, to help me and, and keep me in every area of my life. Thank you for delivering me out of this pit. And, God, help me stay steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, like Minister Wood say. Keep my eyes in this Bible, giving voice activation of your word, because I believe it in my heart and say it with my mouth. I believe it in my heart and I say it with my mouth. So, Father, I believe I am delivered. I believe I make the right choice and the right decision, and I believe I'm cleansed from right now in the name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray, and let us all say amen. Ladies and gentlemen, those who prayed that prayer with me, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you prayed that prayer with me and you truly believe that you said it with the deepness of your heart, God forgive you. He told me to tell you he does forgive you. And he told me to tell you, forgive yourself. Get yourself up. Dust yourself off. God do not want you walking around in condemnation, guilt, and shame. Who the sun set free is free indeed. If God said he's forgiving you, he's forgiving you. And the Bible said if God be for you, who can be against you? I love you. And I always remember Jesus Christ as Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say again, I ask you to forgive me about tape five. I pray and decree and declare that tape six was better. But do not stop looking at tape five because the Holy Ghost said some things through me on tape five that I think has changed your life when you apply it to your life. And always remember, Jesus Christ is Lord. From the preacher, from the minister, Minister Bernard Woods, Jesus Christ is Lord. Peace out. Amen. Woo! Jesus.